for the opening stage of the Santos Tour Down Under. It was off to the Barossa as we started stage one from Tanunda, heading back to Campbelltown, 132.6 kilometers. A beautiful day, the Australian flag proudly flying in the Barossa and the riders all signing in. Jack Bobridge puts his name on the board. Very early sign in for Jack Bobridge, looking very comfortable. Everyone talking about Marcel Kittel though, the German who'd won the opening classic and of course the farewell for Cadell Evans. Two, one, away! And to a big cheer, the 17th edition of the Santos Tour Down Under was underway. And it wasn't long before the break was forming right from the gun, an attack by Luva Vestra, quickly joined by Luke Durbridge, Jack Bobridge, and the Russian rider Maxine Belkov. Four riders going clear. Two circuits uh, around the Barossa Valley and uh, the town of Bethany, extremely important because in Bethany there was, in fact, a time bonus sprint. Marcel Kittel was fairly relaxed in the early part of this race, quite happy to allow the four men in the lead a certain amount of freedom. And that was because they were expecting to haul them back in before the finishing line cheered along the road. They were now approaching Bethany at 28 kilometers into the day and the first time bonus sprint and Jack Bowbridge was the man moving clear. A three second bonus for him, Vesta would get two seconds and Belkov taking one second for third. Yes, at this point, the riders had around about a minute advantage over the front end of the main field, which was very often controlled by Team BMC and by Team Sky, but they were still allowing the four-man leading group a certain amount of freedom. Round to Bethany again. We were now at 60 kilometers into the race, and this time it was Luke Derbridge scoring for Orica Greenedge, followed by Belkov and Vestra. So three seconds for Derbridge, a joint leader now on the road with Bobridge. The next challenge of the day would be the climb of Checker Hill, a hill we would go up from the opposite side. In the 17 years of the event until today, this was never the way it was meant to be. Behind, though, the peloton still lingering just over a minute back as they took on their feeds. But it was expected that, as we saw Cadell Evans recovering from a little bit of a mechanical incident at the back end of the main field, that the four-man leading group would get caught before the summit of Checker Hill. But the four men in the lead, they had a different idea in the back of their minds, and as they started the climb, they began to lift the pace. They were approaching Checker Hill with a lead, and they're covering here 61 kilometers an hour. They had a lead of just over one minute and 10 seconds. The peloton were expected now to chase them down over Checker Hill and enact a bunch sprint as they came in to Campbelltown. Once over Checker Hill, it was literally all downhill to the finish. But onto the climb, Paul, these boys had other ideas. But well, one man had a certain mission to try and fulfill, and that's a man sitting in first position here. When we got to the top of Checker Hill, Jack Bobridge, a training grounds for him, local Adelaide boy, and he wanted to get himself maximum points in the King of the Mountains competition sponsored by Subaru. He did that very, very easily. Once they got over the top of the climb, it was a rip-roaring descent into the outskirts of Campbelltown. Ten points uh, for Bowbridge in the Subaru Checker Hill King of the Mountains. That was his first lead in the classification. And now we were really pushing on, hovering around 97 kilometers an hour on the bicycle. It was all now looking uh, fairly normal for the main field, which was stretched into a very long line as they went through the area of uh, South Australia, which only two weeks ago had been ravaged by some very drastic forest fires, bushfires. The gap had come down to 28 seconds, but they would not give up. There was some tricky descending being enacted too. Watch the man on the left. Belkov just about getting around that right hand as we charged down the gorge, heading towards the finish. And the, the peloton behind were still there, just 35 seconds behind them. The catch, of course, was surely to come soon. They were hovering. They were waiting to see which team would take control at the front end of the main field. And it really wasn't very long before the team of Giants started to chase. But it was all too late as they came into town. An attack by Brobridge uh, to try and catch up with Belkov, who had also tried to move clear. The finishing line was virtually in sight, and the peloton were a matter of seconds behind them. As they came towards the finish, watch the man at the back, Bobridge always looking behind him. He was trying to calculate when they would join because he wanted to attack before they did. And as they came up towards the line, it was very, very close. The riders who had broken away in the very first kilometre of the day were bringing this race home. Bobridge attacked. He hadn't won a race since he won the Australian National Road Race Championship 
a few years ago. Now he is back on top, racing on roads he knows so well throughout his career. Victory to the UniSA rider, and in second place over the line was his training partner, Luke Derbridge. Congratulations all round from UniSA. Jack Bobridge was the man. Did you really believe that you could stay away from a charging main field like that? Oh, to be honest, coming through uh, Williamstown halfway, it was, you know, I think it was down to 30 seconds or 40 seconds, we thought you know, all the guys would pretty much given up out there. So um, then it's, again, it's always games, you know, breakaway versus bunch, all day games. So um, oh, the, we, we planned it perfect. So we kept our cool when they were playing games with us and then we played the big game at the end and stayed away. Well, he's got five more days to go, Jack Bobridge, but he's in the Oka jersey after day one. Day two, 150 kilometres as the riders go from Unley to Stirling.